Welcome to another edition of Education Matters. My name is Ray Penny. I'll be your host for this uh, program today. Uh, with me is Patrick Duncan, Manager of Labor Relations with New Jersey School Board Association. Welcome, Patrick. Thanks for having me. Uh, today we'll be talking about the health benefits reform from a couple of years ago. Uh, Pat, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Chapter 78, health benefits were reformed uh, by the state. Uh, can you explain what that is? Sure. So uh, Chapter 78 is kind of the shorthand for the health and uh, benefits reform that was signed into law on June 28, 2011. Um, and a, a big part of that was um, requiring that uh, employees pay a portion of the premium for their health insurance costs. Um, so, uh, like I said, that was signed into law June 28, 2011. Um, for unaffiliated um, non-union people, it went into effect um, uh, for the most part on July 1st, 2011. Um, for some collective bargaining agreements, uh, I'm sorry, collective bargaining units that went into effect then and it was delayed um, for some other ones. So it was implemented, it was a, there was a phase-in period for this. Could you just briefly describe that? Sure. So, so again, the, the, it requires that employees pay a portion of the premium cost, right? Uh, and the size of that portion is a function of uh, the type of plan they choose, whether they take family or single coverage, um, the overall premium cost uh, to the employer, um, and their salary, right? So um, depending on your salary um, and the plan you choose, you may be required under the law to pay, um, let's just say 20% of the premium cost. Um, that wasn't implemented uh, immediately. Um, phase one, you pay one quarter of that, so you'd pay 5%. Phase two, 10%. Phase three, 15%. Um, and then phase four, the final phase, you pay the full 20%. Um, with the caveat that under no circumstances can you pay less than one and a half percent of your base salary. Uh, and that's a carryover from the 2010 law. Uh, negotiations and um, health benefits has always been one of the issues. This law seems to have changed that. It, it really did. So um, it, it, for the last couple of years, um, not to put too fine a point on it, but it essentially took um, a lot of the health care negotiations kind of off the table because over the three-year period, people were going to be paying a much larger share of the premium cost. Um, boards still made achievements in terms of um, going into maybe more managed care uh, plan architecture or, you know, um, moving the, the co-pays around a little bit or moving into the school employees' health benefits plan. Um, but a, a lot of what traditionally took place at the bargaining table in terms of health insurance, in terms of employees making contributions, that didn't really happen because that was going to happen pursuant to the statute. Um, so um, that's what we've seen for the last couple of years in terms of uh, collective negotiations and, and, and um, uh, the health benefits part. Now, my understanding, this law uh, sunsets at a certain point. Now, where do we go when the law sunsets? Do we go back to where we were or it, it's after the complete phase? Of so um, the, the, the sunset's a, a little bit of a complicated question, but um, so for if the contributions for um, uh, the collective bargaining unit um, um, started on July 1st, 2011, which it did for, for some, right? Um, then phase one started um, for the 11-12 school year. Phase two was the 12-13 school year. Uh, phase three was 13-14, the school year we're in right now. And phase four um, will be next school year, the 14-15 school year. So for, for those groups of employees and for the unaffiliated, um, the law will sunset uh, for, in terms of the health care contribution requirements on July 1, 2015. Um, some collective bargaining units, they, they delayed the start of the contributions and therefore the sunsetting will be delayed also because um, in order for it to sunset, it has to be uh, at phase four, the fully phased in contributions uh, for an entire year. So I'm in negotiations now. Right. Uh, does that affect my negotiations now? Uh, you know, if the union comes to me and they want to negotiate the benefits? There are two really important points I want to make in terms of, um, uh, you know, the posture of negotiations right now. Um, one, um, and this is critical, right? When the law does send set, right, if you negotiate health benefits after that and they'll become negotiable after that, um, the status quo for negotiations purposes um, is the fully phased in cost contributions from the employees, right? So um, it's not as if, uh, it, it doesn't happen that when 
the law sunset, it goes back to whatever's in your collective bargaining mm -hmm. agreement. If the collective bargaining agreement said, said you know, we will provide single coverage, independent coverage, and you don't have to pay anything, um, that doesn't happen. In order to move away from the fully phased in cost contributions, the board has to affirmatively agree to do so. Um, there has to be an agreement between the parties to, to move away from that cost structure. Um, if there's no agreement, it stays at the fully phased in cost contributions. Okay. Now, the, the second point is um, th there's kind of an outstanding question of, um, let me kind of illustrate what's going on for um, districts that are going into collective bargaining right now, right? So there are a lot of districts going into collective bargaining right now where their employees are um, at tier three or phase three, right? Um, next year, they will be in phase four. Mm -hmm. um, fa in, so next year is 2014-2015. Um, that will also be the first year of um, their new collective bargaining agreement when they do finally, when they reach an agreement. Um, so the question is, because for those districts, the law for employee contributions aspects will expire or sunset on July 1st, 2015, the question is, what do you do about that at the bargaining table right now? Mm -hmm. um, if you read the, the statute very carefully, what it indicates is that the board not only doesn't have an obligation to negotiate over that right now, it's actually um, it's a non-negotiable topic. You shouldn't be talking about that at the bargaining table right now. You can't legally talk about it at, at the bargaining table until after the law expires, until July 1st, 2015. So what you can't do is you can't pre-negotiate what's going to happen in year two or three of the contract. Um, what the law says, and I can, I can read it right here, mm -hmm. um, it says the public employer, that would be the board, of course, uh, and the employees, this references uh, the union, uh, who are in negotiations for the next collective bargaining agreement to be executed after the employees in the unit have reached full implementation. Um, so, you know, the, the logical reading of that is that um, you can't negotiate about it this contract, but at the end of this three-year agreement, then you can sit down and negotiate about uh, whether or not you want to move away from that cost structure. Um, All right. So, and then after, uh, it will go back to the way it was before in, in terms of health benefits being a negotiable item. For only, this period, it's been kind of off the table. Right. Only in terms of it being negotiable again. Now, again, the most important point we're going to make, right, is that the status quo for negotiations purposes is the fully phased in amount. So in order to move away from that fully phased in amount, uh, the board has to affirmatively agree to do so. Um, and, you know, the board ought to think very carefully about whether that makes sense or not. Yes, uh, I'm sure they, they would. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if they have any questions, though, they can call uh, the Labor Relations Department or email you. Absolutely. Um, we're, we're, we're here every day, and we're, we're happy to answer any kind of calls you have. Um, there will be kind of an extended discussion about this very topic at the Labor Relations Mini Workshop, which is... Uh, October 23rd, um, the morning of October 23rd, Wednesday, at workshop. So um, if, if this is an issue in your district, I, I ask you to please attend, and um, we'll, we'll talk about this even in more depth. Okay. Patrick, I'd like to thank you for joining me. That brings us to the conclusion of this Education Matters. Uh, like I said before, if you have any questions on this or any other labor relations issues, please contact either Patrick uh, or the email address below. Thank you.